Friday night, 8 o'clock, we're back. Just like Jason, you can't kill us, tell it like it is, UPTV, <laughs> Channel 6. The Kool-Aid sippers to my left and right will be sitting with me and running their mouths all night. There's uh, one he, of them. He rapping now. Hey, you know, <laughs> I got my swagger, what, my swagger on the corner? <laughs> yeah. Me and Jay-Z. <laughs> but uh, we're going to talk a little Alana sports, NFL, NBA, whatever you want to talk if you want to jump in on the conversation, hit us at 328-8280, 328-8280, stat girl, 3.967, pie. What happened? <laughs> What's going on? What happened to what? It's cold outside. It's cold outside? Yeah. It is a little nippy out there, fighting <laughs> on us. Bun, what's going on, man? Hey, how you doing? You got on your snow fighting uniform right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what's you wrong with that? Like you just came in with Paul Bunyan's axe on your shoulder. You right. Yeah, you ready to go? Ready to talk some sports? Oh, talk anything. Whatever you want to talk about. It's Thanksgiving weekend, you know. Oh, so we can talk recipes, pies, cakes. <laughs> no more. Give us, give, give us one of them good Kentucky recipes, right, man. That's what I want to hear. What, what's, what's your mama's favorite, man? Oyster casserole. Oyster, Oyster casserole. casserole. I don't know how she make it, but she make it. Mountain oysters or oysters? No, no, not mountain oysters. Oh. <laughs> oysters. Oh, I'm just saying, you from Kentucky. You know. <laughs> okay, I'm, right, I'm just saying, you from Kentucky. You mean, you know. I got a little spook there. Cause it was, it it is. Like you like, no, no. no. The way you said it, it looked like Jethro Bodine. Like, it didn't right, have a, the best oysters. It didn't have a trough for those hog shillings. Oh, chitterlings. Yes. Chitterlings. chitterlings. Do you, do yeah, that, that's everybody's favorite. Do you help clean the membrane out? Of Never. I wouldn't eat them. <laughs> can't eat stand the smell of them. You don't eat them? No. Oh, man. You don't know what I you're missing. Same from, I guess I, what? What the are you from? And what that mean? Because I don't eat hog guts. Well, hey, you know. You hog everything else? Right. I sure do. <laughs> well, I tell you what. Cow stomach. <laughs> Just like what old boy said on Boomerang, I eat it from the root to the tooth. <laughs> Big bang. <laughs> Big Wayne, what's going on, man? Oh, man, it was a rough week for me, man. I was going to say, man. I thought I was going to get the paddles out. <laughs> Clear? No, nah, I, I got my own, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How, yeah. how well do we know? <laughs> Don't tell nobody my secret, man. Well, like I said, you, know, you want to jump in on uh, Mountain Oyster over here, or paddle, paddle Zapper over here, <laughs> give me a hit, 328-8280. I hate to do this to Big Wayne, but we got to recap what happened last week. Fighting the line, I took on the Ohio State Buckeyes, and Terrell Pryor came in here. He beat Illinois like Aaron Pryor, beat up uh, <laughs> one of them old lightweight fighters. And he, he's from Ohio, too. Yeah. He's an old Cincinnati boy. He looked good. And, uh, you know, looking at that particular game, Ohio State won 30 to 20. And, same old, same old what we've been seeing for the past four weeks. Turnovers, man. It was there to be had. Uh, we're going to have to change his name from Juice to the Baker. Right. You know, like <laughs> Apple you, turnovers. There you go. You Cherry turnovers. Up. But looking at that game, 30 to 20, Ohio State ran for, what, 350 yards rushing. They and that's the, it. And they threw the ball Nine twice times. Yeah. in the second half. So you knew what they were going to do when they had the ball. Why pass when you can run? But run like that. You know, but this like, was, why fly, but it, why fly was that damaging, though? I mean, it was still there to be had. It's just number seven put the ball on the ground and he threw it away. I mean, I think if Illinois could have converted on offense a couple more times, they would have had – probably would have had the pass because, like you say, why why uh, pass when you don't have to if you're in the league? Now, when, uh, a couple weeks ago when we previewed this game, uh, we, uh, we had talked about the weather. And the fact that it was going to be cold, it was going to be windy. Mm -hmm. We expected this to be a running football game. And it and, was. And it was Both a running were. football game. What I'm wondering is that Illinois, you know you've got a six foot five, six foot six. They get in the red athlete. zone and forget about him. Uh, no, I'm talking about on, on, on the defensive side. Uh. Prior, you got a kid that really relatively hadn't thrown the ball well all year, but he does have the long stride to run. Right. Why don't you think they put a spy on him with a safety? Or the, the play on the end zone when he bootleg. Why isn't the 
you know they ain't finna pass. Mm -hmm. You bring your safety up and put him right on the edge. You know he gonna bootleg and come to the outside. He ain't running up the middle. He ain't running up the middle all year. Right. But why you covering the pass when they only pass the ball? How many? Like you say, two I mean, times in one half. Two times in the second nine half. Nine for the whole nine game. Nine for the whole game. <laughs> come on, man. You don't need a safety down there in the red zone. You know what they gonna do. Right. Now, uh, speaking of safeties, uh, Dante Hardman, he's been hitting ever since he got. Uh, activated and, and he's been uh, I don't. I don't football. see what was wrong with the play. He's been hitting some guys in the mouth, <laughs> and uh, no exception. On a third and ten play, Ohio State had the ball. Uh, a pass was tipped by Ohio State receiver. Uh, it was going over the head of a second receiver when Hardiman came across from his safety position, hit the receiver. The line judge threw the flag, called it a late hit. That play right there kind of changed. Mm -hmm. Can I say something? Make up for that game. Oh, he go. You know he gonna say something anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Delon just threw the flag. It was it was it was one of the penalty only because it was face to face. It wasn't a late hit. Mm -hmm. The second receiver tried to make a play on the ball. The ball was still still could have been caught mm -hmm. had Hard Hardman hit him. Right. So I mean, if you're gonna call a, call the flag right, don't say late hit. Make sure that everybody knows what you're calling. Call it a helmet to helmet hit because that's what it was. It wasn't a late hit. Right. If you still can make a play on it, because if you don't hit him, like I say, he still catches the ball. Now, in house referee. In house referee. You saw that play. Yep. Give me your breakdown from the. Well, first of all, in college, once the ball is tipped, all bets all. There's no, ball. there's no pass interference. Right. There's no nothing. What they call, they call a personal foul. Mm -hmm. For late hit. No, for hitting a defenseless player because. Now he was it's all about it though. was all about protection. Mm -hmm. When the ball once once got past him, the play is over for him. Oh, so but so he hits him, and he hits him master, master. But master. he didn't call him helmet to helmet. He called late hit. Did you or did you not see the receiver make an attempt on the ball with but two the, hands? But the ball was tipped away. Okay, but he's not defenseless if yeah, he's making yes. an attempt on the ball, the ball, Bundy. The ball was past him. But yeah. he's not defensive. No, it wasn't. Yeah, the ball did. When I watched the play after it was tipped, it did go over the top of the receiver's head. And the receiver, I agree, the receiver had his hands out, but the ball was high. I think one of the things about that, uh, Hardman has been headhunting all year. And, I mean, like I said, he's been laying some good hits. If you think back to the – But that's what we've been ca calling for all right. year. We've been asking for the guys. So you can't blame him no. for the play. What you can do, it goes back to what I kept harping on all year long. The defensive scheme, that tells you that if that ball is tipped by one receiver and goes over the head of a second receiver. He was out deep, of position anyway. He's out of position because how deep do you have your safeties play? Right. That he has to run all the way across the field and then end up with a master mass contact yep. with the receiver, the second receiver on that play. But this year, <clears throat> college high school pro has been emphasis on helmet to helmet contact. And that would have been, been the right call right there, I agree. Player. Right. You know, a, you know, a ball go past a player and he's running. I've seen it happen Randy Moss a couple weeks ago. He's running, and the ball's clearly past him, and he get drilled. Yeah. Boom. I agree with you. Now, I mean, I, I sat there and saw for myself. He attempted on the ball. Like I said, it was helmet to helmet. That's the call you make. The ref got to be clear when he – because you got 60,000, 70,000 fans in the, in the stadium thinking you called him for a late hit. Yeah. You got to be more specific. That's true, because y'all sit around and listen. You got to say the right word, because if you don't say the it's, right word – Thank you. You, you, <laughs> you, you, you made a bad, bad call. Yep. Well, bad call, not bad call. I think that was a pivotal play in the game, but yeah. I still go back to the fact that Illinois gave up over 300 some odd yards on the rush defensive side of the ball. You cannot play a team like Ohio State. Now, granted, they've got some great receivers in terms of Hartline and, and Rubisky. Uh, Rubisky and those guys, but. Terrell Pryor is still a freshman quarterback. Make him beat you throwing. Penn State loaded the box up the whole night they played them and dared him to beat him, and he could not beat Penn State. Now, I had no way am I trying to compare Illinois' defense to Penn State's defense. However, if you see what's successful for one team, sports is all about copycat yep. situations. If you see something working for another team, you go out and try it until it fails for you and you've got to make adjustments. I still think if they'd have loaded that box up, with eight, even nine guys in the box and put a spy on prior. And another thing, that's a quarterback you do not blitz. Make him throw the ball. Don't don't flush him out. Every right. time he dropped back to pass, they flushed him out first down with his feet. Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't even blitz this dude. Make him see if he can see if but, he can beat you. But the thing about Illinois, uh, the week before, they got 
shout out to Sky like it was uh, duck season right. up in uh, Ford Field. And I'm sure the defense coordinator, Eleanor, he wasn't going to take that chance of, you know, he was playing regular defense. Mm -hmm. He said, well, either you're going to run on me, time possession, but, you know, you're not going to pass for me, not two weeks in a row. And they, and they dared him. Now, and it uh, backfired. The final thing on the, on the defense side of the ball, Benny Wells looked like the running back that everybody expected him to be in terms of Heisman Trophy candidate. But obviously, he earned his foot in the first game of the season. So he's really just getting back to form. And just mm -hmm. unfortunately, he got back into form against the Orange and Blue. I think the play that kind of capsulized his effort that day was, once again, Hardman. I <laughs> love this particular play. He's going low for Benny Wells, and Benny Wells did his best. Ronaldo Nehemiah and hurdled him for an extra eight, nine yards. I've been arguing all week with people about why did he – that's Benny Wells coming at you. What, you going to try to tackle him up high? If, if Hardman made the right move. It's just Benny Wells made a great play. And that's exactly it. I'm glad <laughs> you said that because when people look at a DB or a safety coming at a 230-pound – That's moving. That's running at top <laughs> speed. If he gets higher than what He's he gonna, is, he'll be like – uh, you be on the other the, 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 you know the highlight would be even funnier. Right. Yeah, like one of them Acme commercials right. Wally Coyote is We we he's smashed. Right. Now let's flip it to the other side of the ball. The offense, 20 points, but as we talked earlier, you know, it looked like the new bakery was in town because turnovers were abound. Juice put the ball on the carpet one time and threw a key interception down in the red zone. And when we look at <laughs> What's happening with the offense, they made a, a change late in the third quarter, fourth quarter area, pulled juice and put Eddie McGee Three in. Three games too late. Three games, seven interceptions too late. My question to you, and I, you started already, no more juice? Too late. You got to end the season with him. I mean, you don't try to salvage something that's already – I mean, let him see if he can bounce back. If you want to try to save the season, you should have did that four games ago when juice started playing bad ball. Mm -hmm. You know – it's too late now. Ride out with juice now. I mean, I don't see the reason for the change. And to me personally, it's not going to make a difference. Right. Eddie, Eddie McGee, he showed you every time he touched the ball, every time he's got in the game, he's, he's produced a turnover too. So I don't see much difference. But what do you think? No more juice? Leave juice? Let him oh, go. It's like Big Bear Down said, leave him in there. Ride the season out. Right. You went to They're going to be six and six. They got their six laws. Right. right. Yeah, now, the way I look at it, uh, first of all, Wayne mentioned earlier it's a few games too late. I've been looking at Juice all year, and I've been talking about his sporadic effort early in games. We've talked all year long that he's put up some big numbers, but when you need him to make a play early in the ball game, he seems that he's either coming in a little hot and a little high with his throws, and when the other team gets a couple of scores on their line eye defense, it seems like the offense is pressing. They're trying to create something when nothing's there. The, the bright spot, Jeff Cumberland, great uh, reception in the end zone for mm -hmm. a touchdown. Uh, Juice did make some good throws there, but he's still looking like he's pressing with the offense. And the other thing, and we talked about this off the air a few days ago, he's not running the football the way he used to run the football. It's almost like, like, like he's being told to stay in the pocket. Stay in the pocket and look for your first, second, third read when, in fact, Juice's best ability – his escapability and, and, throwing, and throwing on the run. Yeah. Okay, here's the question for you. Okay. Is he hurt? Or are they covering up injury? Hey, well, you no. Like He's been blitzed several games. Not only blitzed, not only blitzed, Joe, for a while he was their leading rusher. Mm -hmm. So them, you got to take them hits too. Yeah. You know, I mean, like we get in a red zone last week, he threw the interception inside of 20. We've been running the ball down Ohio State's throat the whole game. Right. The game. Why throw down there? Keep running. And it was on first down. And in that particular play, uh, Laronitis was coming up the middle. There was a lot of pressure on him. Yeah. And he got hit again on that play. Mm -hmm. and it seems as though he's taking a lot of shots and, up the middle as opposed to people coming off the corners. So. And, yep. you know, not to, you know, take Juice's side or whatever, but once again, the receiver did not fight for the ball. He almost stopped on his route. Right. He was bumped off his route. You got to fight for the ball. Once the ball's in the air, that ball is yours. If, it, if it's not yours, knock it down. It seems like you take away that first game Illinois played Missouri. You know, they run them down the field, they score. Now, it seems like Illinois, once they get inside the 20, they shut down. They're they the, the, they the best 20 to 20 team. You know, Juice Williams throw for 400 some yards. Good. They throw for 400 yards, but they only score 17 points. A team that throw 400 yards, 
You should have. You should have. They, they had almost 500 yards worth of offense last week. Yeah. 20 points. And like Coach Dickens said, if you throw the ball 30, 40 times, you 10, you 20, 30 points behind. Yeah. And it, they seem like they just when they get in the red zone, they be like, okay, let's try this play. Yeah. Do what do what got you there. Yeah. They ran the ball down Ohio State throat all last weekend. Get inside the 20 and stop running. That's you know that's where they lost the game at. Well, you know Eddie McGee, as we mentioned, came in the game late third quarter, early fourth quarter. He did have an injury that necessitated Juice going back in. But right now, my question is, you know, obviously we got one last game tomorrow against Northwestern, but then you're really playing for next year. The question is, is fast Eddie the answer? Is he the answer at quarterback? Or are, are we pushing the panic button where what a, next year Juice comes back off of this? What do you do? What I would do is let Juice play this season out and come uh, spring ball, it's wide open again. Mm -hmm. It's wide open. Don't just, I mean, Juice, y'all y'all rolled Juice this far. Let him play this last game, see what he can do. Right. New season start, clean the slate. It's, it's a wide open job. And I say Juice, they ride Juice out. Yeah. Because Zook is trying to get public league recruits. Mm -hmm. Now, if he, he sat there, he didn't roll Juice for three years. Bingo. If he, if he dropped him off to fourth year, the public league guys would be like, well, if I don't perform like my freshman year and sophomore year, will they drop me off the map like that? And, and he don't want to do that right now. He's trying, he's trying to build credibility in the Chicago public league, and he got to ride juice out. It's, and, like, it's like a plague that he got to yeah. doctor it up himself. Right. And not only that, you could possibly lose juice for next season if, I mean, say Eddie ain't, is not the man. Now you got a, a quarterback and juice that's wavering on Every time he makes a mistake, is he gonna come out the game? Right. You know, let him let him end this season. Like I say, clean the slate and go from there. I tell you what, y'all, y'all got a Terrell Pryor coming in next year. I watched that kid uh, yeah. a couple, he's, couple he's, months ago. He's no Terrell Pryor, but he's pretty good. I mean, him cat about from, six uh, five. He about six five man. Yeah. He got nice nice arm. He well, run the, he run the spread. I've heard, uh, you know, the kid that from Carolina that's yeah. on Illini's team has got a cannon for an arm and he can throw it. Now, my question, uh, I'm going to throw this back out here about Eddie and Juice. Juice will be going into his senior season. Now, I agree with what you said, Bundy, that uh, by bringing him in his freshman year, letting him play, open a pipeline to the public league in terms of recruiting. Mm -hmm. But now are we looking at a situation where what's best for Juice in terms of his pro career? If you think about Michael Robinson when he was at Penn State, Michael yep. Robinson was a, a, a good option quarterback, but when he went to the pros, became a fullback. He's playing for San Francisco now. Brad Smith, a uh, nice option quarterback down at Missouri. Receiver for the nice Jets. receiver for the New York Jets. Do we, for the sake of Juice's pro career, he is the best running back, regardless of whether you talk about Dufresne, Ford, et cetera. Juice is the best running back on this team. For next year, for his pro career and for a stable running game, do you turn him into the full-time running back? Do you leave Eddie out there as a wide receiver and make Eddie the quarterback? I put both of them in the slot and let Cheris play. That's what I want. I put both of them in the slot let Cheris Cause, play. Because you look at now, you get recruits in. I mean, yeah. they just want to play. Recruits. They just want to play. Right. If they want to come in and they come in and not playing, guess what? They, I'm gone. They go to one double A school yep. where they play immediately. And you did see a lot of enthusiasm from Eddie McGee when yeah. he got the opportunity. He was happy to be on the field. Just to be on the field and play receiver. So <laughs> when you put uh, a guy like Eddie McGee out there in the slot and he made some plays, you go ahead and leave him out there. But I really think looking at Juice and his running capability, he would be a, a, a good, uh, maybe a third down back in the NFL mm -hmm. or uh, possibly if, if, if it lost a few pounds. Possibly a tailback because he's got the speed and the power. Right. And, you know, for them to go ahead and make the move to put Eddie at receiver, that means that Jacob Cherish is making lots of ground. You know, the coaches got to be confident that if Eddie goes out there and get hurt, they can rely on Jacob Cherish. So, which, by saying that, go ahead and probably give him a chance next year. If he's the passing quarterback that everybody says, you got a, a, a weapon that we haven't mentioned tonight and a really is man that would be best served down the field catching passes from a real quarterback. Right. And you got Jared facing the transfer from Florida coming. So maybe you can open up your passing game with a better co passing quarterback and use Juice and Eddie elsewhere. Now, uh, you're going to tomorrow's game, playing against Northwestern. That game will be seen at 2.30 on the Big Ten Network. Uh, 
final thing on the quarterback situation, if you've got one game left and you're playing against Northwestern, whether you, you, you win or not to me is really irrelevant. You're really playing, as I said at the beginning of the show, for next season. Why not do what you said, put the kid in uh, at quarterback, put Juice in at running back, throw Eddie out there at slot receiver, and just and, and run your experiment now before you even start going into spring drills and get ready for next year? Because, <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but slim hope they think they, if they win, they'll go to a bowl game. Right. Just slim hope. But. What? Hey, I mean, it, I mean, it's a slam hope, but if they get six wins, Illinois is a team that travels well, and they got marketable players. And no one sold in Minnesota, even though Minnesota beat them. Yeah, yeah you I, know. I, and I'll be honest with you, I agree with him on that because the the lower bowls, like they need Florida money. Bowl, they like, need money. They need uh, money. They need people to travel. And the way the economy is going right now, you want to guarantee as much revenue as possible. Illinois going six and six. You know, that, that may not look like a, a, a real bold team, but when you use the, the fact that you've got alumni all over the nation, mm -hmm. and, for example, if they play at the Motor City Bowl, that's just a little north of uh, Chicago, and all the folks up there. That's where they just come from. Yeah, well, they only played in front of three people at that one, you know. Might be six. <laughs> right. Bowl game, <laughs> right. Something like that. Now, like I said, they play Northwestern tomorrow. Northwestern is 8-3 and three overall, 4-3 and three in the, uh, or excuse me, 5-3 and three in the Big Ten Conference. This is not your father's Northwestern. Northwestern used to be the team that you scheduled for homecoming. <laughs> Everybody scheduled Northwestern. Well, Pat Fitzgerald, the uh, former linebacker uh, who played under Gary Barnett, is doing a great job up there coaching. They just went to the big house last week. It's not your father's Michigan that they played, <laughs> beating Michigan 21-14, to 14, but Northwestern still is a viable candidate to go to possibly, may not be a BCS Bowl, but they will be playing Champs in, Bowl, in huh? one of the Champ Sports Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, uh, outside shot of play maybe on a New Year's Day, but looking at Northwestern tomorrow, they run that spread offense that we've seen give most teams fits this year. Same, we've seen what's going to happen. Same thing. Um, Load up in the box because they're going to run the ball. That's all they're going to do. Mm -hmm. They got yeah. one receiver that's pretty good, Eric Peterman, out of Springfield. Right. Play for Sega Hart Griffin. Other than that, I mean, load up in the box and make them beat you in the air. Because I'm telling you, Northwest, all they want to do is run, run the spread on the ground. Right. Keep the ball in their hands. They ain't, they're but not you know trying what? to that go. That team, no matter who, how, how bad they're doing, they will keep running the ball. Yeah. And every, eventually, the second, third, fourth, they'll break one. Pow. Yeah. They but what I don't understand, they're only three-point favorites. You know what? I still think this guy's is Northwestern. I still think Northwestern, the reason why Illinois is three-point favorite, number one, uh, the history of Illinois. We don't, we don't condone betting. But if we did. Uh, take the over. <laughs> one, two, three, two, three, this football game. Now, the other thing, you know, we talked last week about the weather and how it would affect Illinois. It's supposed to be a little windy up there in Evanston and a little chilly. You know, <laughs> we talk about the time of crackers. Just a little chilly. Just a little chilly. And with that being said, Northwestern likes to run the football. Illinois has not been running the ball consistently. They can run it, but they just haven't been consistent. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they, they had a good game last week. Now, this week they'll come up with 50 yards on the ground. Right. And so, with that being said, <laughs> going to the Northwestern game, I, I, I'm going to have to get a, the, the edge to the to Wildcats. And the reason why I say that, they're 8-3. and three. They haven't been 8-3 and three in a long time. You have to go back almost to when Pat Fitzgerald played in the mid-90s for them to be, you know, an 8, possibly a 9-win team. Second of all, nothing makes the season better for them than to beat the in-state rival fighting the line. Thirdly, this is a recruiting game. Mm -hmm. If I'm Northwestern and I'm trying to get some of them same guys, may not be getting those same guys out of the public league, if you're trying to get some of those guys out of Catholic League and some of those suburban teams, this is going to be a big game for them. Yep. With all that being said, I'm looking at Northwestern 28, Illinois 17. I think the, the issue for Illinois is not a physical thing. It's a mental thing. I think this team It's a 230 out. game, bro. It's a 230 <laughs> game. Yeah, it's, it's time to change. Right. And you know, always get on about these early look, games. Uh, I think they tapped. When they lost to Western Michigan, they mentally tapped out of the season. That's what I was going to say. I would take Illinois, but, I mean, the first quarter is going to tell it all. Are they going to come out flat? Because that's their problem. They've been, they've been flat every game this year. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Zook is saying in the locker room or not saying, but they come out in the first quarter and they're not playing in the first quarter in any games. Right. So if they come out flat tomorrow, it could be ugly. Yeah. 
What are you uh, What are you looking to score? <laughs> I know it's hard. Right. I put it like this: I don't see Illinois winning, man. You just don't see him winning. He just he can't call a score. I, 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 you know, I, I mean, give me much respect on that because that's a true Kool Aid drinker. <laughs> that even though he knows in his heart, he can't I mean, play. They but, can win, but I just can't. I mean, I know they have the capability. They don't have that. You know that taste. But I just, I mean, man, dude. Uh, <sighs> Vince's mouth out. What do you say, Vaughn? Illinois Northwestern. Northwestern thirty-five. Illinois thirty-one. Okay. In fact, this is only the second game on grass, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Illinois. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good point. <laughs> uh, like I said, twenty-eight seventeen. Now, if we're wrong, then it makes Illinois six and six, and it makes them bowl eligible. Now. That may you bring my trophy in next time. Uh, get it right, trophy. Yeah, I, we'll get your classic helmet, the one you swore on that short bus. <laughs> That'd be the only trophy you'll get from me. Only way they go bowling, I will win. Well, even if they go, my question to you, if they win, do you bowl or not to bowl? I mean, why, after coming off of a because bowl, bowl season, I'll tell you, you why. go out there and go? I'll tell you why. You played the whole season with freshmen and sophomore, sophomores. If you get to go to a bowl, that's more practice time. Mm -hmm. All those kids. I mean, practice never hurt anybody. Right. So you take the practice time, you get better, and, and you go into next season farther ahead than you would have been without going into a bowl game. Yep. But if you're 6-6, six and six, you're bowl eligible, you get the invite, do you take it? Yeah, like Wayne said. That's it's exposure, you know, man. I mean, any way you look at it. You know, you can bring recruit, you know, recruits can look at the game and say, well, you know, we went from Rose Bowl. Right. We might not Go, but we play all our young guys, mm -hmm. and next year we build and we and, should be and, better. And for one thing, Joe, this is Illinois. It's not Florida State, or this is Illinois. Been to one bowl game in the last, what, eight years? Yeah. Go to every bowl game you can get to. I don't care. You may, you know, a lot of people around here may think we just big time football team, but we're not. But just, this will be the first time you've been back to back bowls, wouldn't it? Do it. Long? That's what, like I just said, yeah. go to every bowl game you can get to. That's true. That's true. Period. Yeah. You, you're not, you know, you, Illinois, you need all the recruiting uh, help you can get, man. Yeah, I agree with you. Right now, if you look at the Big Ten, uh, you've got a three-way race for the uh, title with Penn State going up against Michigan State tomorrow and Ohio State playing their natural rival, Michigan. Uh, as I said earlier, this is not your father's Michigan. Rich Rodriguez went in there and threw a monkey wrench <laughs> into the Wolverine dynasty. That school has played football for 129 seasons, and it is the first year that they've lost more than seven games in 129. Rich Rodriguez, you Hold better on. have something up your Hold on, Joe. Hold game. on. If Lloyd Carr was there, it wouldn't have been any different. It would have been One different. starter back on offense? Well, let me explain to One? you what would have happened. If Lloyd Carr had not announced his retirement, I don't believe uh, – both Manningham and Arrington leave. I think one may leave, but I don't think Arrington leaves. The other thing, Ryan Mallett would have been your quarterback. True. It wouldn't have been Stephen Three. Possibly even spot, possibly even Terrell, Terrell Pryor. Pryor. Exactly. It would have been Nick Sheridan. <laughs> or know, Stephen or Stephen Three. <laughs> you know, that would have been your quarterback. You wouldn't have had offensive linemen that weigh two hundred and fifty pounds. Your offensive lineman in Michigan would have been weighing three, three plus. Three thirty. And they'd have been road grading. And <laughs> your running back wouldn't have been Sam YouTube McGuffey. It would have been Brandon Miner <laughs> yeah. and Kevin Grady. So that team would have been totally different if Lloyd Carr had stayed. But to Michigan fans, me being one, that's what you get. Hmm? Because for three years, people cried, get rid of Lloyd Carr. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. And you got him out of there. And now what do you have? You could have got him out of it, but you could have stayed in-house. Exactly. Well, You could have stayed in-house. Well, here's the other problem with Michigan. They thought with their prestige and their arrogance that Les Miles, a Michigan man, was going to leave LSU after he won right. the national championship game. Not. Nah, come on, man. Mm -hmm. Put them oil men I'm saying they could have, they could have, they could have, uh, was it Ron English? Ron he English. He could have got the job. As defensive coordinator, yeah. he could have got the job. But all in all, Michigan went up there. Like I said, Rodriguez threw in a monkey wrench. The game, even though they'll be playing Michigan Pride, Ohio State might walk the Wolverines. What you mean, might? You know, I, I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not talking about like you know, a 21 point victory. Oh, okay. I'm talking about one of them. Uh, 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 Ohio oh, State oh, plays. You heard it first. Do. It'd be closer than what they think. No way. I'm telling you. What do you give me? Give me a score, oh, uh, Great Swami. Closer. What's close now? 
State. How they gonna score seventeen? They will. Okay. I'll be what you know what? As Michigan fans, I hope you're right, but I got a feeling that this is gonna be like Roy Jones against Joe Calzaga. They're gonna get cut up, beat better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to, the other game tomorrow. Penn State, Michigan Put State. Put your money on the state. Penn State. Put your money on the state. Well, it's Penn State against Michigan State, so the, the, state. the home state. The home state. <laughs> okay. So that's this Penn. is Joe Paul's last game. And he's going out with a bang. Yes, they just sir. haven't looked that good. The last, I mean, that's the team I picked in the beginning of the season to win the Big Ten. They just haven't looked that good the last two or three weeks. Yeah. The Iowa game, they fell off a little bit. Yeah. I mean, Before I think that. they fell off before that when, Before when that. they concussion. Yeah. yeah. They can cut. I think he still have effects of it. I mean, concussion these days, I mean, you don't just bounce back. It takes time. <laughs> right. Like, you know, you might need some mamas cooking and, you know, grandmas brew through. Their defense is going to have to play a better game than they played against Ohio State. Well, Javon Ringer. That's what I'm saying. Running, running, <laughs> and running like he was Forrest Gump. You know, and, and I, I agree with you that Penn State's defense got to play better football. Look for, when this thing is all said and done, Ohio State to be going to the Rose Bowl. Ooh. And, uh, I think we'll see so, Michigan State. So, basically, you saying Michigan State, Gary Wynn. I think Javon Ringer's going to have a big he just, day. Just, uh, you got some stats for it or something? You know, I, I always had stats for that. You know, Javon Ringer's okay. going to put at least two touchdowns <coughs> for the last five games. This won't be any exception. And with the weather the way it should be in Happy Valley, that lake effect snow, going to be a little nasty game. They're supposed to get three, six inches of snow. And you got to run it back like that? Come on, man. Don't question my skills. Yeah, it's going to slow down Penn State, State a whole State lot. 13, Penn State 6. 38-20. Right in your book. 38-20, Penn State. The only, only thing will be 38 will be the ounces of beer that you will be drinking before that ball game. That's it. <laughs> wow. I'm confident in this. Now, when the cameras go off, I'm going to be begging for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to talk tough. Right. Tough Tony. Right, 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 right. Right. Well, first half of the show is over, and Stack Girl is over there grading papers like the school marm. Out of Little House on the Prairie, <laughs> did everybody get A's this year? Man, is it a good big game or something? You know I'm doing my homework. I, oh, I forgot. Well, we'll make sure Bruce doesn't pan in. <laughs> Check out your uh, uh, study <laughs> habits and the uh, resources that you're using for your, uh, is it your thesis or your term paper? Um, that paper is done. I'm on another assignment. Another assignment. Is it you using the same resources though? No. Oh, oh, I, okay. I just want to be sure the Green Eggs and Ham book was closed up. <laughs> Sam, I am. Well, speaking of Sam, I am. The Fighting Illini went down to Nashville. Cashville. Wow, that's all I can say. This year's uh, version of Bruce Weber's basketball team looked just like last year's version, except for two cri uh, critical areas. Sean Pruitt wasn't shooting free throws. They had Dennis Eggersley, the closer. And the ball was going into <laughs> Sean Pruitt on the post. And Randall went out there doing them dumb fouls. Mike Davis, <laughs> an athletic forward, even though he went three for 11 last night, showed the athleticism Still that Illinois was double, double. for. Mike Tisdale in the post, he can shoot it and stroke it outside the lane, something that you did not have with last year's version of the fight in the line. Eye. Guard play, Dimitri McCamey is coming into his own. 23-3 and three last night, big threes when they needed them. Trent Meacham, the steady senior, along with Chester Frazier, who just gobbles up anything that comes off the, the boards. All in all, you got a 69-63 victory by the Illinois basketball team. Illinois basketball, is it fantastic? Or it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, what? It's all right. Oh, uh, he, he, he's still in football mode right, right now. Right, but you man, dude, I'm not dumb. I mean – it's all right. It's you Kool-Aid, okay. you Kool-Aid, you burn down. What did you say? You burn down right. I'm not going to say they horrible. I mean, because they went on the road in the SEC and they won. Last year, that game, they would have lost. All three of us know that. Yes. They lost every game last year after the four-minute mark in the second half. <laughs> they, they would be in every game when that four-minute mark hit. That's when they, it's over. <laughs> like I told Joe last year, we played 28 minutes. I mean, what, what 48 minutes or whatever? It was a 40 minute game. Before, they played 38. 38, 32 minutes. They went to the NCAA. Yeah. Exactly. You're right. You're right. Now, one of the things that <laughs> happened last night, Wayne pointed out that never happened last year free throw shooting. Illinois was 11 for 11 from the free throw line. If you think back to last year, as I pointed out, and I hate to pick on one guy, but in those 
crucial situations. It was almost contagious. Sean Pruitt would miss the front end on a one at one, or he'd have uh, a chance for two points and only make one, and sometimes wouldn't make any. And it became contagious, mm -hmm. and it spread through the rest of the team. Well, last night, Mike Davis started the uh, trend, making his free throws along with Tisdale. Trent Meacham hit some big free throws in terms of one on one setting in the Restoration dropped it in at the end, bounced one in and netted the other one. Then hit two free throws at the end. The other thing, Illinois rebound 42 33 for Vanderbilt. The guy to me who set the tone, I know Mike Davis is the athletic guy that's going in there, tipping the ball around. But Rich Simrod coming off the bench, yeah, he gave him some good quality minutes in terms of big body down low. Bun, you, you were doing your best, Bruce Weber yelling from the end of the in line. <laughs> It's all you horrible hear. gym to play in, man. Man, that is. That, I mean, that's why you got to give him even more kudos, man. That that's not a that's not that's, that's a, not a normal that's thing a to go advantage for. A person, right? Man. How and can it, you coach from in that and setting? It's a raised floor. Yeah, I've been there. I mean, you can sit there and you can sit there and look. You can now, sit at the first row and look at and look at his shoes. For an SEC <laughs> school to go in there and win is not that big of a deal, but for a team that. Don't play there. That's that's an eyeball thing to me, man. Wow. And then the bad thing about it, you got to go to the center court to check, to check in. So you can't even really possibly coach the way you want to with the quick substitutions, yeah. stuff like that. Guys are running to, to the score. To right. To they tie the before they even well, get they in. Warm, they warm. They warm. They loose. <laughs> right. That's why when, that, well, that's why when Calvin Brock came in, he shot as soon as he touched Tell you what, it. Tell you what, it's been warm. Right. Hey, it warm. if it been like that in the NBA, Robert Parrish would never play in the fourth <laughs> quarter. Parrish, go in. Man, I ain't going over there, man. They better bring the scores table over here. Take them all the way down there. Forget that. Send in McHale. I'm not going in. But one of the things we uh, talked about, we talked about how tough a place like that is to play in. When you've got a young team, you only got three seniors on the team, Chester and Trent uh, starting guards and Calvin coming off the bench. You've got relatively uh, nothing but sophomores and freshmen out there playing basketball. And you go out there and, and beat a team. It's not the same Vanderbilt team that they had last year, but it's probably the, one of the five toughest places to play in all the United States. And you go out there and yeah, play. You had a 20 game home win, win streak. Exactly. And it's gone now. Now it was snapped because two guys, we talked about the youth on the team. You've got uh, Demetri McCamey and Mike Davis, two sophomores who are basically taking the team, putting them on the back, and leading them. They the truth. The way the way that Mike Davis plays is what we was looking for out of Brian Randall for four years. Mm -hmm. Athletic, rebound, can score a little bit. So he asks. Don't try to, you know, right. You don't have to be a superstar. You don't have to try to jump from the free throw line. That's why he stayed hurt. Trying to be too acrobatic. Just play within your means and be, oh, dunk be on you. yeah, be productive. He dunk on you real hard and go down and foul you. I mean, I know Mike Davis, <laughs> right. I know he fouled out last night, but that was a horrible call that he fouled out on. That wasn't a horrible call. <laughs> that referee is still looking for the contact. Right. It, that one and the one Meacham got yeah. when he was bagging up and the dude put the forearm in his chest. Yeah, it, it, it was some questionable <laughs> calls there. We got a little home cook. And they played through that. And, they, and that's why I was going to mention, you talk about Mike Davis and, and uh, compared to Brian Randall. Last year, Brian Randall would, like you said, go down, make a spectacular play, and get two points for Illinois, and get the other team eight points off of stupid fouls. And, and give you six points. minutes in the first half because he got three fouls. fouls. And he'd get them. Then he'd go to the side. Like, Bang. <laughs> be the best Look. cheerleader you could have. <laughs> but then the other thing that I was really impressed with, the control that McCamey played under. The 23 points he scored last night was 23 points within the system. It wasn't like he was out there forcing right. shots. And, and trying to do more than he had to, but his jumper was on. And when you can get that type of score from him and Trent coming off the screens, where now when McCamey's scoring, that means help has to come from the weak side, and that's when he can start feeding other guys. I don't know if it's me, or I don't know if y'all noticed it or not, but Meacham, he looked a lot more comfortable. He didn't, like last year and the year before, he would hesitate a lot on his shot. Mm -hmm. He was coming off screens looking to pull. And as a shooter, that's what you got. You got to let it go. Right. You stop thinking about it. If he can continue to do that all year and be a consistent three-point shooter, they'll be all right. Well, I think the other thing about Trent, what makes him look comfortable, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, not only McCamey and the way he played, but look at the way Chester Frazier drew the defense mm -hmm. with his penetration. You saw Chester go to the bucket several times. He's not looking to score, but by penetrating and drawing the defense to him, kick out. he was able to kick that ball out 
whether it was to Trent or Mike Davis got a couple of nice little bunnies in the middle of the lane because of Cheshire's penetration. So with him doing that, handling that basketball and being able to draw that defense, I think it is going to make Trent a lot more comfortable when he's out there on the basketball court. Now, we talk a little uh, Illini sports here, whether it be football or basketball. Before we move on. Yes, sir. Coach Law doing a thing. Oh, oh, man. man. Yeah, the, the women are uh, stepping that thing up. They just beat Missouri the other day, so they're two and zero now. Yeah, three and zero. Three and zero. Yeah, yeah. And, and with what she's got going with the recruiting class, the second ranked recruiting class in the nation, and that's the big things that happen over there. <laughs> you I know, I want people got there. I mean, the, the tickets are cheap, and it's free seating. Right. Free for all seating. Yeah, go out there, spend two dollars. Get you some popcorn and watch a game. It's a pretty good team, and they they lose Lacey Simpson this year. That's it. Yeah. So you know they they'll be pretty good this year, but next year with the recruiting class you got coming in, you can look for them girls. I can see a Sweet 16 birth out of them. Well, remember when she came here, she said that uh, she believes that this will be a national championship team uh, within what four years. Yeah. And she said if you, if you if you believe it, you can achieve it. Well, I think in the path they're going on right now, just in their second year. I think you'll be looking for fighting the line out to be one of those upper echelon women's basketball programs for year to come if we can stick around here. We've talked line eye sports, uh, football and basketball. Sack girl is great at her papers and not one person has given us a call. A the A means you agree with us, or B you getting the turkey greased up right now. You got your <laughs> elbows deep inside a turkey neck and you're pulling everything out and throw it in an old plastic bag. They're making a turjerkin. But <laughs> whatever you're doing right now, we appreciate you watching. UPTV Channel 6, tell it like it is. Still got about 20, 15, 20 minutes left. If you want to give us a call, hit us at 328-8280, 328-8280. Now we're going to move on to the funny shape football that bounces dun, 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 one way or the other. And dun, after dun, dun, 11 dun, dun. weeks, the <laughs> NFC North, it's tied. Just like the first week. It's zero <laughs> and zero and zero for three teams. And the zero Lions, for four teams. Right. Well, the Lions got a zero, but they got it going the other way. Right. We won't even talk about them. The Packers, the Bears, and the Vikings are all tied five and five in the NFC North. Now, each team has a different battle this weekend. The Bears go to St. Louis to take on the Rams. The Packers play on Monday night against New Orleans. And the Vikings have to go back. Down south, they went down south last week to Tampa. Now they got to go back, but they go to Jacksonville this week. Wayne, I'm gonna start with you. Bear down. You got six games left. Five and five. There's no wild card is coming out the NFC. No. Nah. Whoever wins the division, it's got to be a winner. A winner, winner. They didn't hit that three quarter pole and they round the stretch. The <laughs> What's happening? <clears throat> Everybody's got problems. Who's gonna overcome their problems? From the Bears had the easiest schedule. Mm-hmm. But with that said, they got to play balls. Like Mike Brown said, they got to find a defense somewhere. I mean, you take last week's game, worst game in three years probably. But with that said, it's just one game. Up until that point, they had lost a game less than by less than seven points. So, I mean, they just got to dig down and find some defense. It, with the schedule that they have, I can see the Bears coming out on top. Okay. Bud, Bears, Packers, Vikings. I hate to say it, but I think Chicago Bears coming out of the division. They got they got the easiest schedule. I mean, because I mean, I don't I don't know. Last week it was like you know it was one of them. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You know. Okay. When is it gonna stop? I and mean, the loss is a loss. When, you, you when, know, it, when it stopped, <laughs> the gun went off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know Ryan Grant. You know he where he been all year. Right. All of a sudden he shows up. He want to be OJ Simpson. Yeah. Right. Running through the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Running from police. But, uh, I, I'm going to have to agree with you guys that uh, the Bears have the easiest schedule. I think the Packers uh, blew the opportunity they had earlier this year. Uh, the enthusiasm that they had up there in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers and what he was able to do in the first two games, that's gone. A lot of people say, well, he got hurt with a shoulder injury and they're trying to mask that. Well, the, the main thing I look at the Packers now, they lost Nick Barnett. A couple weeks mm-hmm. ago, he's gone for the season. They've also lost uh, a couple other. I think Cullen Jenkins is, has, has been down on the defensive line. The the Bears go down to St. Louis now. Think about this: St. Louis did beat they Dallas. They did beat and Dallas. Washington. Yeah. And they're playing in the dome. They're playing at home. Who but that might be happen? just what the Bears need. I, I, you know, no, I, I, it, I, St. Louis, St. Louis done. You know, St. It, oh yeah, they're done. But the, the worst team you want to play is 
a team where guys are playing for contracts. They, they, they didn't quit. They didn't, they, Rams didn't quit. Well, if that's the case. <laughs> they're they calling you. They're going to call you tomorrow to see if you want to come down and play. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you Lone me. snapper. Right. <laughs> no. Towel snapper. I will not be the best towel snapper in the locker room. Hey, come here, uh, Avery. <laughs> Hey, is that Tory Holt? Bow! Well, you're a tight end. No, you could not. Can you see me running up the scene and a safety and I got my head turned? Don't get hit like Santonio did last night. You know, next you know, my shit strap up here across my nose, face mask. You'd be compensated? You'd be on ESPN? Exactly. I'd be on E60. And they'd be carrying him off. He's going to get a Mike Utley. The inspiring (laughs) story of Joe Stobart. <laughs> As I'm typing in what I have to say, right. I can't speak anymore because my voice Oh man, got they wouldn't do you that way. That, that, that equipment <laughs> tough. <laughs> you know what? Put me in a knight in shining armor uniform, and then maybe I'll go out there and play. <laughs> Other than that, no way. But what I'm gonna say is that Packers lost the enthusiasm early in the year. Minnesota, that that's my team. I say it right here on the air. But I'm gonna tell you right now, Brad Childress, he's got to be fired. And the fact that you went. All off season, knowing <laughs> that all you needed was a competent driver to drive the car. Right. And you went out and got Hulk from driving Miss Daisy, and you benched him. And then what'd you do? You got Forrest Gump as his backup. Right. Gus Farrat, he got to be like Vinny Testaverde used to be, colorblind, because he throws it to the wrong team consistently. And, and That's what's the, the only reason why. And what's the deal with the Williams brothers? The Williams brothers right now, they didn't went to see uh, Roger still... Goodell, and uh, they talked about them diuretics they were taking. Mm-hmm. No word has come out, but. If, if that comes down, that, that defense is through, man, because that's the anchor of their defense right exactly. there. Exactly, because they run defense. What defense? Those, you, you, got two guys, <laughs> you got two guys who can shut down anybody's running attack yep. to let the other nine guys fly around the ball and make plays, whether it be trying to get turnovers or play the pass. So with all that being said, I mean, I hate to admit it, but the Bears have the easiest schedule. If it's I'm, laid out there for them. If I'm Lovey Smith, oh, I know God, you, Big Wayne going to go crazy when I say no, this. Don't say that. No. I don't let Kyle Orton play against the Rams. No need of risking uh, aggravating that, that ankle sprain. Grossman can do a serviceable job against the Rams. All you got to do is put make, put him in situations where he can make makeable plays. Right. You know, but you can run Matt Forte 30 times. Against the Rams. At least let Grossman start the first half off That's and, see, and see where it gets you. And then if you are in trouble, then you go to Kyle Orton. Yeah. I would not put Kyle Orton on the field this week. It's like a bye week for him. Yeah. Right, let him heal. Because the stretch run uh, starts next week. And by being colder, the ankle ain't going to get any looser. No, not at all. <laughs> nope. Any and, looser. And you think about what happened up in Green Bay. That's, they should have seen, he shouldn't even played in the second half. 37-3, he... He, he didn't come out played. to the last series. My thing is a high ankle sprain takes four to six weeks to heal. Look at Bob Sanders in Indianapolis. Yeah. He's just coming back. Gross, uh, Orton only sat out one week, and he's really the cog in that offensive machine. If he's not up there running the thing, he right. doesn't work. So I wouldn't. Have, I know that's your arch rival. You wouldn't win that game. But technically that game wouldn't have affected their standing winning or losing. Right. So, you know, I really wouldn't throw all my mm-hmm. eggs. Because they still got to play Green Bay again. He's anyway. Coswell Cog, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this big game, though. The big game. Jets and the Titans. That, that. You know what? I, who, I do not. Who the thug? Who the thug? I, not, you know, I do not like Brett Favre, but I think this is the week the Titans go down. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to disagree with you on this point. If they were playing in New York, I would agree with you. But now that they're playing down in Tennessee, Tennessee's had a couple of tests on the road against Jacksonville and when they came to Chicago for mm-hmm. the Bears. Now they get to go back home. I think Tennessee going to put this thing in overdrive. I just, I just think the Jets, man, Chris Jenkins got the Jets defense mm-hmm. balling. And yeah, I just do. don't, I really don't think Kerry Collins can outsling a Brett Favre. I don't think but, you have to worry about that. I'm telling you, Chris Jenkins, I'm telling you, man, they, they've been playing some good balls. So if they don't get that running game off, Kerry Collins is going to have to do what he did in Chicago. Yeah. And, and you, do you think he'll be able to do it? I don't think he'll – if you put Kerry Collins out there to throw 40 times a game like he did against the Bears defense, the, the Bears' uh, pass defense is abysmal right now. Yeah, atrocious. But the Jets, uh, they, they, you're right, they are playing some good uh, defense. But I think that the teams that they've been playing recently on that pass defense and just defense in general 
haven't had the weapons at the running attack and the, the, the Titans' defensive side of the football. Yeah. Brett Favre, this is one of those games. We can Brett throw Favre them picks. He throw them picks. Three or four times. If they can get the pressure on him, yeah, if you get the pressure on him, he will throw the interception. Yeah. We all know that. If you get uh, Javon Curse coming off the edge or if you get Albert Hainworth coming up the middle, Ooh. you know, Brett, you know, he don't and, have to uh, move around. Uh, <clears throat> what's called to be back to? Uh, his name uh Van Boschen? Van Den Bush. Van Him too. Yeah. Both of them will be there. <laughs> Van Boschen and Van Den Bush. Yeah, he's Van back. Bosch. Put them put them both in. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I agree it's gonna be a big game. But I think the Titans are gonna pull that one out. The uh Turkey Day games that'll be coming up. Uh, speaking of that, your cousin back. Who that? Adam. Pac-Man Jones. He got reinstated. <laughs> yeah, you know what? He got what? He only got hey. nine lives. He got twenty lives. And they go to downfall. You think that's it for the Cowboys? Hey. Well, lock, uh, locker room around, man. Yeah, Gone. Well, he probably going to locker room. Hey. And <laughs> hey, what I'm we doing tonight after the game? <laughs> T.O. crying. You know, I'm like, man. <laughs> Why you let him back? Now, you know what I'd love to see? A team meeting with Pac-Man Jones, T.O., Roy Williams, the receiver. <laughs> And uh, have Michael Irvin come in. <laughs> and the guest speaker. Hey, did you see that? And hey. Nate Newton <laughs> outside. And right. Security. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Cowboy fans, I know, you, I know you love your team. When you think about some of the people that you've allowed walk into that organization. But you know, I can't give it, you know, a lot of people say the Cowboys. Lucked up and beat the Redskins, and they said, oh, we back in the playoffs. Man, they, but if you go to the season ended, Tampa Bay would be the wild card team. <laughs> like, like, that's what I'm saying. All these Cowboy yeah. fans texting me like, we back. Wait, man, y'all ain't nowhere. Now, you beat the team, first of all, if, if you look at the Redskins, uh, Redskins are pretty one-dimensional. As good as Jason Campbell's played this season, Jason Campbell is really not. Right. And Portis was hurt and right. uh, ran all over him. Right. And they still <laughs> barely won. Yeah, the fact that they, they had a quarterback who really is not going to be the kind of guy that's going to threaten you downfield. Yep. And who are your, your receivers on the Redskins? Nobody of, of no Santana. Santana Moss, he's five foot And Rendo three. L. <laughs> he's five foot two. But so you put them together. I mean, Stat Girl 9.8 is taller than both those receivers combined. No. That tells you right there. I'm, I'm going to tee Bundy. I'm going to have all uh, this negative talk about my Redskins. Oh, we're sorry. I, we forgot. Well, tell them to get better. We, we forgot you were a, a skin. Yeah. <laughs> she got for real. Tell me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, y'all got a tough game this week, too, man. Yeah, the, wait a minute. Who? Which team? Are you, when you I'm, I'm talking about the Giants this time. Okay, the Giants this week. They got a tough game, man. Arizona ain't, you know. Let man. Me, all right, now let me say I, I thought. I thought. Baltimore, I thought Baltimore would be that thorn. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when the big man came, poof, 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 poof. that's all. Hey. Let me say <laughs> but this. you know, Baltimore, big man, didn't give up a 100 yard rusher, but they gave up a 73, a 96, and an 84. Hey, so big man this. took our MRI this week, too. Yeah, and, now, and let me say this They're, the Giants are traveling from where? The East Coast to where? The West Coast. And when you got to make that travel, and it's probably going to be about 80, 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. We don't condone betting, but earth, wind, and fire mm -hmm. cannot beat. Hey, old man. all I gotta say, all old I man. Gotta say. But, but like saying, they scoring. Hey, who they playing the Commodores? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> old man, yeah, slanging uh, it, man. Yeah, Kurt Warner, possible MVP. Gotta have time. Gotta have time. Hey, hey have well, time. okay. Look for the Giants to take their second defeat. Okay. Yep. They, uh, take on the Arizona Cardinals out in Arizona. You'll be uh, about 325 for Curry Warner. Yeah, and, and oh. Fitzgerald going to who who guarding him? Look for Eli to throw two picks and look for Brandon Jacobs to put it on the turf twice. Yeah. Okay. Get that knee. Get that hey, knee shot. That. Hey, tell it like it is. That's what y'all is. And that's the name of the show. And that's what's going to happen. Now the uh, <coughs> the BCS. Let's jump into that real quick before we get. We got about five minutes left in the show. Big game. Big game big tomorrow. Game big game. Up. Oklahoma hosts lock, Tech. lock of the week. <laughs> Sooners. Yeah. Sooner it's, Booners. It's lock of the week? Lock of the week. You hear me? Lock of the week. Ooh. I'm going to have to echo what he just said there. Really? Sam Brad, and I'll tell you what. I'm staying pay, away from that one. Paybacks. They beat yeah, him last year. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. College football is based on emotion. And when you play 
at home and you can ride off your crowd and you've been doing some things you haven't been doing, that emotion is going to be there. But Texas Tech, just like what happened with Texas, Texas had all those emotional games, whether it be Oklahoma State, Missouri, yep. and Oklahoma. And a row. They couldn't sustain it when they got against Texas Tech. Hey, the same thing's going to happen is, to Texas Tech. Is this Texas, Texas Tech's first game on the road in those big games? Because they play yeah. Oklahoma State at home yep. and Texas at home. Right. So this is their first time on the road in a big game. So, yes. yeah. I'm looking and for Sooner Booners coming off a of bye. <laughs> And another Bob thing, Stoops is 61 another and thing, man. two at home. Oklahoma, they special teams, the return game, probably best in the country. And with them playing Texas Tech, there's going to be a lot of kicking off going on. Yeah. A lot of, you know, so that their special teams can change that, change that game around. Graham Harrell's been having a great season all year, but uh, Sam Bradford's thrown for, what, 48 touchdowns yeah. already? So. You know, I, I'm looking at what's happening with Oklahoma. Oklahoma will shut down their running game first. And, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to have to use They're going to make them one, one, make one, one <laughs> dimensional. <laughs> athletes on Oklahoma, but I don't think uh, Texas Tech's defense can keep up with Oklahoma's yeah. offense. Uh, I agree with you. This is the master lock. This is one of them 26 to the left, 35 to the right, 14. <laughs> game over. Yeah, I think it's going to be a wrap for Texas Tech and Oklahoma. I'm going with Oklahoma on this. 56-24. Now, you know, we have a couple minutes left in the show, but we haven't been able to talk about this. Season is real early in the NBA. A lot of stuff's happened. You know, we had some trades that happened. New York just basically cleaned house today. <laughs> the biggest trade that's happened so far is between Detroit and Denver. AI going to Denver or to Detroit mm -hmm. and Chauncey Billups going to Denver. I, I think that's a perfect fit for the Detroit line. Okay, Avery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think I, I love AI, Philadelphia fan. He, he did a lot of things there, but I just I think it's a bad move for Detroit. I, I don't, just don't think I think he jailed right along with him. You think he jailed him and Rasheed Wallace? Because Rasheed Wallace, Detroit he heard, got he heard about man. Rasheed Wallace lately. De De Detroit had got stagnant. I mean, same old, same old Detroit. They tried it for four or five years. It's over with, man. They need. A clean house, do more. In the Eastern Conference, man, that score would be deadly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think if you can get AI penetrating and doing the things that he do, Prince is going to improve, Rasheed Wallace is, is going to improve, and Rip Hamilton. So I, I, I say Detroit got the better of the deal. Yeah, well, I think Chauncey Billup goes to Denver and gives them some stability. Uh, but then the better conference. The other thing I think now, watch Carmelo Anthony's game blossom. And the fact that he knows he's the man and yeah. he's going to have to toss it. Well, that comes to another end. UPTV Channel 6, tell it like it is. We've had fun riding through here. Stat Girl 9.8, she got all the papers graded. Didn't have to answer the phone once. The snow fighter, he came in here with his Paul Bunyan shirt on and a Kool Aid. <laughs> but you know what, one thing? And I want everybody to have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving yes. to everybody. And out I hope y'all thankful for what y'all right. got this and, year. And next year, gotta be week, thankful check us out. for what you WCFN got. Challenge. You may not have a great big Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You take but be out thankful there. for what you, you got. Want to cut his, his <laughs> I don't think you want to go. You may not have. have a car at all. You watch this. <laughs> UBTV Channel 6. Tell it like it is. We'll see you. Sick.